was Halloween night of 2007, freshman year in high school, and I was with my friends Ivan, Ryan, and Jesse. We were all dressed as the Super Mario characters. I was Luigi since I was the second tallest. Ivan was Mario since he's short and buff. Not that Mario is buff. Jesse was Waluigi because he's freakishly tall and skinny, and Ryan was Wario because he's just really fat. So they were the perfect group costumes for us. We live in a very non-congested suburban neighborhood with a decent amount of space in between houses. On Halloween, that's the worst thing ever. Less bang for your buck. We were trick-or-treating for hours, way past dark, and eventually came the time when most trick-or-treaters were heading home. My feet started to hurt, and I had to constantly switch arms for holding the now 10-pound pillow sack of candy, but we planned on going until our bags were completely full. A lot of the houses by now weren't answering anymore. It was probably past their cutoff time for giving candy to trick-or-treaters. Approaching our next house, we saw a purple bucket on the stoop, which was the best feeling ever. I was the one to get close enough to realize it was empty, which was the worst feeling ever. I turned around when I heard a knock at the window of the house. We all looked at the window. Couldn't see anyone, but heard someone call out, Wait! The door opened and an older man, late forties, already balding, stepped outside. He told us to come inside so he can get us some more candy. I said we could just wait out here. He responded saying something along the lines of, Nonsense, come on in, we'll get you your candy. I then stepped in and said, It's alright, come on Dan, let's go. I told the guy to take care and apologized. He just stood there watching as we walked off not saying anything. I felt bad, but at the same time, that guy seemed like a creeper, and I figured I just dodged a bullet not going in there. If the story ended there, it wouldn't be scary, so of course, it didn't end there. We skipped a few of the guy's neighboring houses just to get further away, and continued on with our business. We were walking down close to the nature preserve now, so there weren't many houses around us. At this point, we were now walking back closer to Jesse's house. I noticed Ryan had stopped walking, and I turned around to see what's up. He said he heard someone moving from behind the trees in the preserve. Now this was before everyone's phones had flashlights, so we couldn't just go searching in the woods for someone. Besides, we were just telling Ryan that it must have been a raccoon or something. You may think this is a bit of a cliché, but when things like this happen in real life, you always assume the more logical possibility. It's just natural. Why would we assume we were being followed? I had to put my arm around Ryan's shoulder and nudge him forward. A little ways down the street, me and Ivan picked up on the sound as well. When we all stopped, the sounds of the footsteps from beyond the trees stopped as well. Ivan yelled at the obvious stalker to go away, or we would beat the shit out of them. I knew he was just bluffing though. I could hear the nervousness in his voice. The snap of a twig from beyond the trees triggered a fight-or-flight response in all of us. Me, Jesse, and Ryan all ran for it. Ivan was at first charging to attack, but he quickly followed after realizing we had all taken off. We ran down the dark street, and we all noticed the sounds of at least two or three pairs of footsteps crushing the twigs and leaves in the woods. We banked it hard right down Jesse Street when it finally came up and ran straight for his backyard entering his house through the back door. The first thing we did was peek out through his living room window. We couldn't see anyone. We all had to gather our thoughts and discuss what the hell just went down in his living room when all of a sudden we heard Jesse's backyard gate slam shut. Jesse dove to turn off the lights. There was a click and a bang from down in the den. It was more than likely Jesse's back door. We all agreed to go down armed with knives and face them. Jesse turned on his back door light, but there was nobody out there. Just then the front door opened, and we all screamed like animals. Jesse's mom and sisters came rushing downstairs. They had just gotten home from their friend's little house party. We all rested assured knowing it was just them. Jesse explained what happened, but made it seem a lot less dramatic. Me and Ivan went home after that and called it a night. At 12.30 a.m., I got a disturbing text message. It was from Jesse. 
It said, it wasn't my mom. I texted back saying, what? He responded back quickly saying, it wasn't my mom in the backyard. My finger slammed the buttons on my phone responding back, what do you mean? There was a long pause before he finally told me that his mom and sisters said they never went in the backyard. I told him to immediately check the backyard from his upper deck. He had already done just that. He also told his mom everything, and she had already called the police. They didn't find anyone back there, but Jesse did mention the guy who invited us in while trick-or-treating. Nothing ever became of that, and nothing ever happened at Jesse's house again after that one Halloween night.